everyone. Today I'm here to review a book for you. Today I will be talking about The 12 Days of Dash and Lily written by Rachel Kahn and David Leviathan. This is the sequel to the book Lily and Dash's Book of Dares. Or is it Dash and Lily? It's probably Dash and Lily's Book of Dares which came out a while ago. I actually read it about three years ago. I'll link my review right there. It's very very short like three minutes so just be forewarned about that. But like I said this is the sequel. If you haven't read Dash and Lily's Book of Dares. I will tell you quickly about it before I get into this one. Dash and Lily's Book of Dares, if you can't already tell, is a very Christmassy book, which is great because obviously it is the holiday season upon us. It is all about this girl named Lily who leaves a red moleskin notebook in her favorite bookstore, The Strand. If you're from New York City, you're probably familiar with it because it's an amazing, awesome bookstore that I've never been to but really want to go. It leaves a red moleskin notebook in the bookshelves of The Strand and it's pretty much a book full of dares, hence the title. And this boy Dash picks it up up and he starts to go on this um, scavenger hunt with this red skin notebook with this red moleskin notebook and they start passing the notebook back and forth without really meeting each other they'll leave it at certain places within New York City to do a certain dare to get to the book a very very cute Christmassy book I actually reread it right before I read this one just to refresh my memory it is very very short just like this one a little over 200 pages if that honestly it's probably right on the cusp of 200 pages but I really enjoyed it I thought it was a very cute Christmassy book that is easy to read, easy to fly through, and just overall puts you in the holiday mood and I love the characters in it. It was just very, very cute. So basically that's what Dash and Lily's Book of Dares is all about. So if you haven't read it, I maybe will not watch any further because I don't want to spoil this for you, but I will say, I wouldn't say it's necessarily spoiling because honestly these books are super short and I think it's honestly okay if you don't read Dash and Lily's Book of Dares before this one. If you just want to read that one, that's great. But I will say I would recommend reading that beforehand. I mean, if you put the two books together, it's only 400 pages, which is honestly the size of a regular book. So you can just treat it as that. Like I'm just gonna read this one book and just you know maybe you can like rub in and together that would probably not work out by reading it obviously but you know what I'm saying they're both very very short and easy to get through so I would recommend reading that one first so I just want to warn you that I will be talking about this book now so if you haven't read Dash and Lily's Book of Dares maybe not watch any further it's totally up to you just letting you know I will probably spoil it for you let's begin. So like I said this is the sequel to that book. This book takes place literally a year after the last book ended so we're right back in the Christmassy spirit. Dash and Lily are together but they are having some problems specifically Lily. A lot of things on Lily's life are going kind of askew. Her grandpa is not really in the best um, health and her family is doing okay but there's a lot of changes going on that she's not used to. She's used to things being one particular way and things are not going that way so she's really thrown out of a loop. And if you know Lily, Lily is a very lighthearted, very carefree. She's just an overall very, very happy girl. I've said it in my review before. She reminds me a ton of Jessica Day from New Girl. She's like a young Jessica Day. She's just very, got that really kind of whimsical, quirky spirit. That is 100% Lily and I do enjoy that. And we have Dash who is the complete opposite. He's kind of broody, he's sulky, and he's very serious about reading and stuff. So they really balance each other well out because she's so quirky and bubbly and he's like the complete opposite. But they're really great together so it's coming up on a year of dating for them and so things aren't going so great because Lily is not in the Christmas spirit and Lily is known for loving Christmas so much she has a group of carolers she always bakes these cookies she does these particular things she does every single Christmas but this year she's really just not in the Christmas spirit so hence the title the 12 days of Dash and Lily it starts 12 days before Christmas and everyone's just trying to get Lily back into the Christmas spirit and get her back to being happy and you know her usual self again so that that is basically what this book is all about. Overall, I like this book. I, I can't say that I loved it. I definitely much preferred Dash the, oh my gosh, I'm gonna get so tired of saying Dash and Lily. I definitely preferred the first one much more to this one. It was definitely more lighthearted and fun and it had that whole scavenger hunt kind of thing going on to it. This one, it takes a much more serious tone because Lily is kind of depressed, honestly, which is totally normal, 100% 100 understandable. But it didn't have that same lightheartedness with the first book. You know, because Lily's going through so much, she's changing and her life's changing and she's not really happy with the thing, way things are changing. She's not happy that, you know, things in her relationship aren't really going that well with Dash. Well, that's the whole thing of this book. It's um, it's really about trying to help Lily come in the Christmas spirit again. And I did enjoy it. I just didn't like it as much as the first one. I felt the first one was just such a fun adventure. And this one, we get to know the characters more intimately because they've been together for a year. But I still feel like it was more disconnected, honestly. I felt like we moved farther away from National Lily, if that makes any sense. But by the end, I was really happy with it. I will say the last chunk of this was really, really great. But book this short, I really was expecting more because 
like I said, with the book the short, you've got to pack a lot of punches in it to make it great because it is only maybe 210 pages. Yeah, it's exactly 215 pages. But I did enjoy this one, don't get me fooled, but I will say if you're looking for a lighthearted Christmas read, this is not it. It's just not as lighthearted and Christmassy as I wanted it. It was the first one was much more than that and I get the characters had to grow. We had to see a little bit of a change in them but I still wanted that kind of Dash Lily-esque of it, you know? That's what I wanted. So overall I didn't love it as much as I wanted to. much preferred the first book and I will try to read that every single Christmas because I like it so very much and I think I gave the first one. When I first reviewed it I gave it a 5 out of 5 but after rereading it I would give it a 4 out of 5 which is still pretty good. This one however I can only give a 3 out of 5. I enjoyed it I just wanted more from it. I wanted more Christmassy. I wanted more exploring the New York City and I felt like we didn't get that much but like I said I understand because our characters had to grow and move on and you know adapt to changes but I still just wanted a little bit more Christmassy spirit and happiness in this book so yeah I don't know if I'm the only one that feels that way. Let me know if you read it and you feel any differently that you 100% love this book. I thought it was much more amazing than the first one. I would love to know your thoughts and opinions. So, so yeah basically that's the whole video. It's gonna be short and sweet because this book is literally short and sweet. <laughs> if you like this video be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye!